happened to me in October of 2016, when the killer clown epidemic was going around. I never thought that would be the internet trend I had a personal experience with. But of course, life happens when you least expect it. At the time, I was living in Springfield, Missouri with my wife. Thankfully, we have since moved to a new town for my work. But that's where we had our first place together. One night, she was complaining of a migraine. And after looking all over the store for painkillers, she realized all we had was cold medicine and asked me to go to the store to get some aspirin, as she said it worked better for her than anything else over the counter. The nearest store was a Target just a minute or two away, but since it was already dark outside, I wanted to drive. The killer clown epidemic was in full swing, and I really couldn't tell if it was legit or not, but I didn't want to risk it. Unfortunately, when I tried starting the car in the garage, I came to find that my battery had somehow died just from letting it sit for a day. My wife and I shared a car, so there was no way of jumping it from the garage. And even without asking the neighbors for a jump, it was all too complicated to deal with at 9 o'clock at night. So I gave up and accepted that I would have to walk. I could have downloaded the Uber app and punched in my credit card, but that also felt like a lot of work and a lot of money to get a ride for such a short distance. It would only take 10 minutes to walk there anyway. It would have been two minutes if I could cut through the forest preserve between my house and the store, but I wasn't a fan of walking alone in the woods at night, especially with what was going on. The first thing I noticed on my walk was just how eerily empty the street was, but I couldn't remember if it was always like that or if it was because everyone was afraid to go out at night. Even the frogs and crickets seemed to be a little quieter than usual, but then they all went silent, and I heard high-pitched giggling in the distance. A chill ran down my spine, but I tried to act like it wasn't real, like it was just the internet paranoia getting to me. I kept walking along, pretending everything was okay, thinking if I acted scared, then some creep in a clown mask would sniff me out by the scent of my fear, but if I was strong, I wouldn't be preyed upon. But it wasn't long before I heard it again, and this time it was louder. I immediately started walking faster, only to hear rustling in the bushes of the woods next to me, out of the corner of my eye. I caught the first glimpse of him, the killer clown. He was peeking around a tree, but the psychotic smile of his clown face was unmistakable. The flash of the machete in his hand let me know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this guy was trouble. I knew I was still five minutes away from Target, so I quickened my pace to go as fast as I could without running. Near moments later, I could hear him laughing again, and now there were footsteps behind me. The only footsteps in the area other than mine, and they were getting closer with every step. I glanced over my shoulder and saw the clown following me. But as soon as I laid my eyes on him, he broke into a full sprint. <laughs> I ran as fast as I could, booking it for the store. I swear I could feel the machete swinging just inches from my back. Get away from me, you psycho! I'm calling the cops! I sprinted at top speed all the way to Target, too scared to look back. When I finally burst into the doors, I almost collapsed to the floor, begging for someone to help me. Somebody, please help me! There's a clown trying to kill me! But all I got were blank stares from everyone in the store, like I was a crazy person. Sir, please calm down. There's nobody chasing you. What? I looked behind me, and sure enough, there was no killer clown chasing me anymore. I had no idea when he stopped following me. It felt like he was right on my tail the whole time. Could somebody go out there and check with me? He could be lurking around the corner or something. Sure. As long as you calm down when there's nothing there. One of the employees, probably the manager on duty, was kind enough to check around the corner with me to make sure he wasn't camping outside the front door. Thankfully, there was nobody in sight. Knowing everyone probably thought I was making it up or overreacting to a prank, I felt ridiculous and extremely embarrassed. But that was a lot better than feeling the machete of an insane person dressed as a clown slashing through my flesh. After taking a minute to settle down and catch my breath, I remembered the whole point of why I'd left the house in the first place. I took my time finding the aspirin, even though I knew exactly where it would be. After I purchased it, I lingered around the front entrance without leaving it until closing time. I was petrified by the thought of going out there again, but I only got the stink eye from all the employees waiting for me to leave. While I still had a few minutes left before they kicked me out, I downloaded the Uber app and put in my credit card info, then ordered a ride for $15 to go literally around the corner. I tipped the Uber driver $5 just for not saying anything about why I was taking such a short trip. I would have done anything not to walk back home and risk encountering that psychopath again. I'm glad I did too, because as we were passing by the spot where he first started chasing me, I was staring into the woods, and I swear on my life I saw him again. Stalking the street from the trees and shrubs, smiling with bloodlust, machete in hand. Whenever I think about it, I get chills. For as long as I lived in Springfield after that, I never walked anywhere ever again.
It was no coincidence when Target stopped selling all their clown masks soon after that. Too many people were reporting attacks and threats by people wearing those demented costumes. I guess it's bad for business to be chased and harassed by a masked assailant on your way into a store, just to see the same mask being sold on the shelves. The story was inspired by an incident that happened in Springfield, Missouri around the fall of 2016, which was also the time there was a clown epidemic. Springfield police say they received several reports of clown sightings in the city in the last three weeks around the neighborhoods tormenting pedestrians. Coincidentally, the sales of scary clown masks in Target were up by 239%, which was more than three times the number it sold in past years. Target has since taken action by halting sales of creepy clown masks online and in stores. The franchise, however, still happens to sell clown outfits, but they're the more friendly type, trying to counteract any further clowns lurking in the streets at night. One Friday night, I was at home not really doing much. It had been a long week, and I was thankful for a quiet night alone. Plus, my period had just started, so I felt pretty crappy anyway. Unfortunately, around 9pm I realized that I was running short on tampons. I reluctantly decided to go get some more since I knew I wouldn't have the time the next day. Luckily, Target was close by and it was still open for another hour. I got into my car and drove over. When I got there, the parking lot was practically deserted so I got a space up front. The whole place looked a little spooky honestly. There were only a few lamps that were working. The rest of the parking lot was completely dark. I headed inside quickly, wanting to get back home as soon as I possibly could. The place was fairly empty on the inside too. I only saw a few customers shopping around. The whole place seemed kind of off for some reason. I made my way over to the feminine care section and started looking for tampons. Then I noticed something kind of strange. There was a sketchy looking guy a little further down the aisle, just looking around. He really didn't have any business being there as the whole aisle was just feminine products. It kind of creeped me out a little, but I assumed that he was getting stuff for his wife or girlfriend or something. I didn't want to stay in that area for any longer than I needed to. I grabbed the tampons and started to head to the front, when I remembered that I also needed some toothpaste. I honestly debated just leaving since the whole situation was getting to feel so abnormal. I knew I'd regret it when I ran out of toothpaste later though, so I walked over to another aisle. I was trying to remember what kind of toothpaste I usually got, when I noticed that the sketchy guy had followed me to that aisle too. I was beginning to get pretty weirded out, but I told myself it was just a coincidence. The guy just happened to be needing the same things I was getting, although he hadn't gotten anything from the feminine products. I grabbed my toothpaste and walked to the other aisle to see if he would follow me. Sure enough, he walked into the aisle a few seconds after me. He was pretending to be engrossed in his shopping, but I knew something was going on. I walked around the store some more and watched him out of the corner of my eye. As he proceeded to follow me everywhere I went, anytime I made eye contact with him he would look away as if I didn't know what he was doing. I was pretty annoyed by it and a little scared, but I assumed he must be one of those undercover shoplifter prevention guys. Still, he could practice being less creepy about it. I hurried over to the checkout so that I could leave the store and be rid of him. While I was getting my stuff rang up, I looked around for the man, but I didn't see him anywhere. That made me sure that I was right about him being undercover. Now that I was paying for my items, he didn't need to follow me anymore. I was pretty relieved. I paid and headed out to the parking lot as I walked towards my car. I felt very happy that I had parked so close that I could get away as fast as possible. I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't go to this target again. As I opened my car door, I thought I heard something behind me and spun around to see what it was. There was nobody there but my shadow. I had to be getting paranoid. Then I suddenly felt someone grab me from behind and shove me into the vehicle. I screamed and tried to twist around, but I was being held too tightly. My arms were pinned behind my back as my face was shoved towards the seat. 
I couldn't move. I realized that I was about to be robbed or worse, abducted. I kicked and screamed, struggling to fight whoever it was off of me, but they were much stronger than I was and managed to force me into the passenger seat, slamming the door behind me, the way I had been forced into the car. I couldn't roll myself over fast enough. Next thing I knew, someone was climbing into the car next to me and wrestling the keys from my hand. I looked up and realized that it was the same man from the store. I screamed for help as loudly as I could, while the man started up the car and prepared to drive away with me. I was terrified out of my mind. Then, without warning, another man ran up to the car and pulled my would-be abductor out onto the ground. They started to fight with each other, wrestling around back and forth in the parking lot. My arms ached from where I had been grabbed and my throat hurt from screaming so much. But I pulled myself together enough to lock the door to the car. I strained my neck to see what was going on outside the car window. Then I saw the man who had attacked me run off into the darkness. I started crying tears of relief as I pulled out my phone and called the police immediately. When the cops arrived, they asked me to give a report of everything. I even had to talk to the staff and security at Target. It was all a bit of a blur as I was still in shock from the whole ordeal. The police checked the security cameras inside the store and found that the man had been loitering around Target and preying on multiple different women. There was even a shot of him slowly following me out into the parking lot. What makes this story even more disturbing is that it was discovered that the man was wanted for the murder of another woman. I always wonder if the man had meant for me to share the same fate. I lived with my parents through my college years to save money. The closest store to their house was a Target that I went to for just about everything I needed. I never had anything noteworthy happen to me while I was shopping there, until randomly one day, I was traumatized by something unbelievable. I was in the middle of the over-the-counter medication aisle, trying to decide if I should just buy a packet of 10 allergy pills, or bite the bullet and get the whole bottle of 60. Then, I first noticed a weird skinny guy standing around awkwardly at the end of the aisle. He had an obnoxious Elvis type of hairdo, a patchy beard, and these gaunt sunken in eyes. As I kept contemplating what I was going to get, I saw him gradually inching closer out of the corner of my eye. A bad feeling crept up in my gut, and eventually I gave in and grabbed the whole bottle of pills just so I could get out of there. Barely a few seconds after I started walking away from him, I felt a hand grab my shoulder. It wasn't a hard grab, but it sent chills down my spine and stopped me in my tracks. I turned around and saw the guy right in front of me trying to make a pathetic attempt to pick me up and try to get my number. I was annoyed and wanted to brush the guy off, so I stupidly gave him my number as he was typing it in on his cell phone like some giddy incel that just picked up his first girl. I usually wouldn't give my number out so easily, but the guy seemed harmless enough, and I figured I could just block him if he actually tried to bother me. Unfortunately, I didn't even have time to suss him out over the phone before he started to show that he was way worse than a typical creep. Right after I gave him my number, I checked out, left the store, and drove home. My house was only a few minutes away from Target by car, but it was enough time for me to start moving on from my worries. However, they all came back when I was unloading my groceries in the driveway. Right as I was grabbing the first load, a car started passing by on the street, but then it stopped in the middle of the road, directly in front of my house. My blood ran cold as I stared into the windows, but they were too tinted to see through. Despite that, I didn't need to see to know who was in it. I knew without a doubt that it was the creep from Target. Nobody else was standing on the street at the time, so I knew it wasn't an Uber. I stared at the car for a moment to no avail. 
I could feel the eyes on the other side of the window watching me. In fear, I left the rest of the groceries in my car and ran into my house, immediately locking the door. I watched through the peephole until they finally left several minutes later, and then I asked my dad to help me bring the rest of the stuff into the house. It wasn't long after that when I began receiving the first barrage of calls and texts. He was already unveiling his psychosis, writing me paragraphs about how destiny foretold that we must be together. That's how his wording started, but very quickly got angry that I was ignoring him and he broke down to basic threats. I never answered any of his calls or listened to the voicemails. I considered blocking his number then, but I made the decision not to. I had already unwittingly gotten myself involved with this psycho, so I thought I would actually be safer if I could have some way of knowing what he might be about to do. And things only got worse from there. I kept track of where I saw him, and it only took a couple of days to realize that he was following my every move. I saw him in his car in the parking lots at my job, at school, at any other store I went to, and of course whenever I was home. I started to get rides from my dad whenever I could as it made me feel safer to not be alone, and I hoped that this creep would just get the hint and buzz off eventually. To my disappointment, the literal opposite happened. He saw that I was getting rides from other people, so he texted me saying that he would kill whoever I was with. That's when I started going places by myself again, even though I was terrified to do so. It all came to an end in the same place it began, Target. When I pulled into the parking lot, as I expected, he was only 30 seconds away from pulling in behind me. I was worried about getting stuck with him in the parking lot, so I hurried into the store before he could catch up. I assumed he would walk inside and try to corner me in one of the aisles again, but as I went around getting all of my things together, I never saw him. This actually made me more worried about what he was up to. Obviously, I was more vulnerable in the parking lot, and it was clear that he knew this and intended to take advantage of it. My concerns were confirmed when I got to the self-checkout lanes, which are right in front of the entrance. I could see my car in the parking lot through the glass doors, and lo and behold, there he was. My psychopath stalker himself, lurking around my car. <laughs> At this point, I didn't know what else to do but alert the staff of Target. They saw how paranoid I was and called the cops for me. I watched through the glass as the cops pulled in, spooking the stalker into running back into his car and speeding out of the parking lot, but got a call soon after from the police saying they tracked him down and took him into custody. Then they asked me to come in to give my statement. Through all the proceedings afterward, I learned how close I was to getting seriously hurt, as he was found with a loaded firearm on his person at the time of his arrest. I don't even want to think about what his plans were with that. I'm traumatized by the whole ordeal to this day. I'm always terrified that I'll look around a random corner and see his face. This story was inspired by an incident that happened at a Target in Idaho. A 22-year-old man, which can be seen in the mugshot below, was arrested for allegedly stalking a woman at Target, and even went as far as to wait outside for her to come out. Court documents indicate that the man had been showing up to places that she frequented, such as her home, work, and school multiple times. The man would even go as far as to make death threats to whoever dropped the victim off. Target staff told the police that the man was spotted making several laps throughout the store and hung out next to the victim's car. When the police later detained the man, he was allegedly armed and admitted that he called the victim a large number of times. Court documents say the man called the victim 16 times in a 4-hour span. He has since been charged with first-degree stalking, 